funny because I really wanted th this whole beginning of the video to be really relaxing and aesthetically pleasing. And as I was putting my makeup into my little bin to prep for this part of the video, um, I bent down and I hit a corner of a shelf so hard, right in my new nose. She's swollen and she has a little, little boo-boo right over there. So that was pretty upsetting. <laughs> kind of ruined my flow, I will say that. So I have this little scratch and my nose is definitely a little bit swollen right now. So we're just gonna have to like work around it today. So besides that, hello, welcome back to my channel. So for today's Get Ready With Me, I decided to go with a theme and today's theme is old favorites that I haven't used in a while. So I hope that you guys are gonna enjoy today's video. Let me know in the comments all of your thoughts. Hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you wanna join the fam. And without further ado, let's put some makeup on my face. Oh, my nose hurts so much. So I'm gonna start off first with a primer. I have not used this. Well, I'm gonna say this with every single product, so I'm gonna stop myself right there. But I have not used this in a really, really long time. It's the Guerlain um, Meteorites Base. So the reason why I wanted to use this today is because I actually forget what this does for the skin. I remember absolutely loving it, but I don't really remember what it does. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is a glowy primer, but we're gonna find out. So let's put about two pumps and massage this all over the face. Smells like fancy makeup though. Okay, that really didn't do too much, but it did give my face just a little bit of a glow. It's very, very, very subtle. This isn't like blowing me out of the water or anything. I don't know why I loved this so much back in the day. Okay, the product that I'm actually very, very excited to put on again is this Shiseido foundation. This is the Synchro Skin Self-Refreshing Foundation. And there was a point in time where this was like the only medium to full coverage foundation that I would put on my face. I absolutely love this because I found that it just always looked really fresh and natural looking despite the medium to full coverage. And the shade as well, 240 Quartz, also matched me perfectly at the time. I'm hoping that it's gonna match me perfectly today. So let's just do two pumps and I'm gonna use this Lunar Beauty LBF2 brush to apply. Oh yeah, still matches me perfectly, love that. Okay, yeah, that definitely still looks awesome. I really, really like that. It's giving me that very natural finish but it's still covering my face exactly how I remember it. It's really pretty. This is the epitome of a foundation that is your skin but better. Look how gorgeous that looks. It's so nice. For my concealer, I'm gonna use my Hourglass Vanish in the shade Cedar. This is another really beautiful medium to full coverage product that still looks very, very natural, which is why I wanted to pair these two together. This isn't a super old favorite for me, but it's definitely a favorite and I just haven't pulled it out of my collection in a while. Oh, I really like how those two products mesh together. It's very, very pretty. To blend that out, I'm also using my Spectrum and Katie Jane Hughes uh, 08 brush. For my powder, not using the Kosas Cloud Set today, this is the Hourglass um, Veil Translucent Setting Powder. I feel like this was the Kosas Cloud Set for me back in the day, like this was my powder obsession. Powder is really just one of those products for me where when I find something that I really love that works for me really, really well, I don't stop using it until I find something else that works for me just as well. It is very different than the Kosas Cloud Set. They don't really compare at all. This is a loose powder, as you can see, whereas the Kosas Cloud Set is a pressed powder. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this. I always like to swirl my loose powders in the cap just to really work it into the brush. It helps me from over applying. And I'm just going to sweep that on the center of my face and underneath my eyes. This powder still holds up for me. I really like it because it doesn't um, attach to my dry patches and it just erases your pores. It makes you look flawless, especially with the combination of the base that I put on. My skin looks very, very good, but still not heavy at all. Let's apply some bronzer. I'm gonna use my Tom Ford Cream Bronzer in 01. We're just gonna be using the bronzer shade today. So this is a very pricey cream bronzer and although I really like it, like it applies very, very well. It's a very sheer and buildable product. So you're able to get anything from a very natural look to something a little bit more intense very easily with this stuff. Like it's just incredibly easy to use. But even though this formula is really, really good, I don't really feel 
that it's totally worth its price. For me at least, I never use the highlighter shade in here. It's kind of just like a balmy clear highlighter. It doesn't really do anything too special for me. So you're paying all that money, at least I'm paying all that money to just use one product in the two product compact. And I started using this probably about two years ago. And since then, so many different cream bronzers have been released on the market. Like there was a moment where there really wasn't that many options for cream bronzers. And that's when I started using this. And now that there are so many options with so many different formulas, there are plenty of formulas that perform very similarly to this. Um, so you don't really have to spend, I think this is like close to $80 for a compact for a cream bronzer and a cream highlighter, but it's still beautiful. And I still always enjoy wearing it whenever I do pull it out. So there's really no denying that. I mean, look how nice that looks. That's how it should be. if you're paying that much for a cream bronzer, it should be that easy to use and, and that great. That shouldn't be a surprise. I do also like to apply a little bit of cream bronzer, just kind of on the side of my eye, kind of like applying eyeshadow without applying eyeshadow. It gives you that shape without applying anything on your actual eyes. For my blush, I'm gonna be using a Glossier Cloud Paint. I honestly do not remember the last time I used a Glossier Cloud Paint. This may be one of the first cream slash liquid blushes that I tried that I really fell in love with. And it's kind of the same thing with like the Tom Ford Cream Bronzer. Since I started using this, there's been so many other cream and liquid blushes that have been released that I've just fallen in love with. So this kind of went to the wayside a little bit, but this is still a really beautiful liquid blush and I definitely still stand by them because they, they work really well. What I really like about these is because they're in these little tubes, you can very easily mix them together with each other. So let's say you have two or three of the Glossier Cloud paints. You could have a lot of fun and mix your own custom color. And so it just adds a lot of versatility to these blushes if you do have multiples of them. It's also really nice to mix in something like this with like a liquid highlighter to get a glowy blush. Oh my God, should we do that today? That actually sounds like a great idea. Let's do that. I'm going to go in with the shade Storm, which is this very pretty berry shade. And I'm going to take a little bit of my Auric Glow Lust in Morganite, just a teeny tiny little score to that. So I have both on the back of my hand. I'm going to mix them up. Okay. So it definitely did change the color just a little bit. It made it a little bit more subdued, which I'm not mad at, but it's going to give such a pretty glow to the cheeks. Oh my God. And that color is gorgeous. These are the exact blush colors that I've been leading towards the most lately. I feel like I say this in all of my videos, but I just love these berry shades. I do find the cloud paints to be pretty easy to work with. They do melt into the skin very easily. Um, and they're also quite buildable too. So you can get something pretty intense, like what I'm going for right now, or you can sheer it out. As you can see on my other cheek, I applied a lot less, um, but you can get both looks very easily with this product. <laughs> it's a little bit too much though over here. So I'm just taking my foundation brush and just going over the edges and that corrected it immediately. For my highlighter, I'm going to be using the Laura Mercier face illuminator. And this one is in indiscretion. I remember when these were very, very hot, 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 hot on the makeup scene. Um, and everybody was like going crazy over them. I haven't used one of these in so long. I don't know if it's going to be totally up my alley because as you guys know, I do like more of a natural highlighter and I remember these to be a little bit more intense, but let's see. I'm just going to put some right on the tops of the cheekbones. Oh, that actually applies very nicely. It's not over the top at all. I went to go in to highlight my nose, but then I realized I have a little scab right in the center of it. So I probably shouldn't highlight that. <laughs> it really melted it into the skin really nicely. It doesn't look stripey or too obvious. I like that a lot actually. Nice. For my brows, I'm gonna use my Milk Kush Fiber Brow Gel in the shade Grind. This is a great tinted brow gel. I know it's called the Fiber Brow Gel. I actually don't find that this adds much volume to the brows, but it does do a pretty solid job at tinting the brow hairs pretty aggressively. <laughs> like it makes your brows pretty dark if you want them to be. That's a little bit too dark for my liking. We're gonna have to soften that a little bit. She's got some bold brows. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Shaking my concealer brush and just kind of running along, especially the front of the brow, just to soften it. And okay, that did the trick. Okay, I zoomed you guys in a little bit because we're gonna work on the eyes. So I'm gonna start off first with my MAC Painterly Paint Pot. How could I do a throwback video without 
putting a MAC paint pot on my lids. And look at this gorgeous, fresh pot of painterly. There's nothing more satisfying than an untouched MAC paint pot. This was another very, very hot item back in the day. It felt like almost everybody used either MAC painterly or MAC soft ochre paint pot. Back in the day, you were either team painterly or team soft ochre. I was actually more team soft ochre but I think I actually prefer painterly nowadays. Soft ochre is a little bit too yellow for my liking. This is more on like the pinkier side. And I feel like it looks a little bit softer all over the lid. And it's just gonna help in kind of grabbing onto the eyeshadow and making it last a little bit longer. So I was trying to figure out what eyeshadow palette I wanted to pull out for this look. And I thought it would be fun to dabble in one of my Marc Jacobs eyeshadow palettes because these used to be my favorite and this one was probably my ultimate favorite it's called scandalous i'm pretty sure mark jacobs beauty is not going to be available anymore which is very sad because there's so many mark jacobs beauty products that i adore and i can't believe <laughs> they're just leaving us like that and these little palettes were so awesome i also love the design of them i like how they're so long and skinny <laughs> so i'm going to start off with this matte shade right here it's kind of like a matte taupey cream and I'm going to apply this in my upper crease. I kind of want like a very very soft pinky smoky eye because I am going to do a bold lip. Spoiler alert. So I don't want my eyeshadow to be too wild and crazy. I want it to be pretty subtle. And then I'm going to go in with this metallic shade. It's like a really pretty pink metallic. This was probably my favorite color in the entire palette when I was using this a ton. It's just such a good all over lid shade. I'm applying it with my finger. I really don't want any smokiness on my eye at all. Like I said, I am gonna be doing a bold lip and I want the eyes to be very, very subtle. So I'm only gonna do one more thing on my eyes. I'm gonna take the lightest shade in the palette, which is this guy over here and put that on my inner corner. This was one of my favorite inner corner highlights too, back in the day, because it was quite intense and blinding and just the perfect inner corner shade. When you are doing a really simple look on the eyes, I do feel like highlighting the inner corner is very important because it really makes the eyes look really fresh and open and it pulls the super simple look together. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of this kind of on like the first quarter part of my crease. This is my favorite placement to really open up the eyes. For my mascara, I'm gonna be using my Maybelline Lash Sensational. Let me know if you were around during the Maybelline Lash Sensational era because this was another product that I was obsessed with. I really do go through <laughs> these like obsessive phases with different products um, that I just basically can't stop using and this was definitely one of them. So let me know if you were there during that time. This is just a really, really nice all-in-one mascara. I always loved it because it just did a good job of curling my lashes. Um, also lengthening them and volumizing them and I found that it was kind of similar to the Benefit roller lash and I honestly still do find that it is similar. It has that same really good curling Effect that the roller lash has like I don't need to curl my lashes and it just lifts them right up. It's great I know this eye look is incredibly simple and you could probably do it with really any eyeshadow palette that you have. But it's just so fresh and pretty, and I feel like it just makes the eyes look so open, and I love it. It's really the perfect eye look to do when you are doing a bold lip because it's a little something, but again, it's not too much either. So for my lips, I had to pull out my Bite Lipsticks. This is actually the newer formula. It's kind of like a soft matte finish. The older formula was a little bit different. They were on the creamier side. So I'm gonna be using the shade Harissa. I wanted to use this one because, look, it literally matches the brick. It's almost the exact same color, so I wanted to blend in to my background today. And I like this because it's pretty wearable. It's in the brown family, but um, it does still have that little bit of extra something to it that makes it a little bit different and a little bit bolder than like a typical nude. So I'm gonna line my lips first with a MAC lip liner, a classic of course. MAC lip liners are always gonna be classics, you know? Like they're always gonna be in my collection. They're not my ultimate favorite lip liners. There are definitely other formulas that are creamier or more long wearing, but the MAC lip liner formula is just a classic. It just always works no matter what the color is. I'm just always guaranteed that it's gonna work really, really well. So let's go into the Bite Lipstick.
Oh my God, that color. That is the perfect brick color. <laughs> and that's the finished look. I really love everything about this look. I mean, there's a reason why all of these products were favorites at some point in my makeup life. I really do love doing videos like these because it just reminds me to take those old products out again and, you know, actually use them because it's not always about the new, fresh and exciting. Sometimes those old faves do it even better. This lip color is beyond stunning. Why and how do I not wear this more? That's the question that I'm asking myself right now. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments and any of your thoughts on the products that I used today and hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy today's video. And that is it. I will see you guys in the next one.